Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Did you know that you can edit video in Lightroom? Specifically, I'm talking about the version of Lightroom that is often referred to as the cloud version of Lightroom, not Lightroom Classic. I actually did a video on this around three years ago when they added this feature to Lightroom, but it's changed a little since then, so I thought I'd do this updated video. Also, I need to mention that the video editing capabilities of Lightroom are rather rudimentary. You could definitely get a better video edit using any dedicated video editing application. But if you're looking for something easy to use and quick to use, Lightroom is the way to go. Now, as you can see, I have Lightroom open and there's a couple of different ways you could go about starting your edit of a video in Lightroom. The first way is if you want your video saved to the cloud, along with all of the edits you do to that video, then go to this cloud tab and click on add photos. Now I know we're adding a video, but click on add photos. When you do, you'll get a finder window. Just navigate to where your video is on your computer. You can see I have a video on my desktop. I could review it for import. A screen will come up and then I could just import it into Lightroom and that video will also get saved to the cloud and any edits I do will get saved to the cloud as well. On the other hand, if you want your video to just stay local to your machine, you don't want it on the cloud at all, and you want your edits to say stay local to your machine as well, go to the local tab. Now there isn't an add photos button on the local tab. You just need to navigate to where your image is or your video is. I mentioned it's on the desktop and if I go there, there's no import process. Just go to the desktop, that's where I have it and it's down here in the film strip automatically. If you had more than one video, or if I had more than one video on my desktop, they'd all be down here in the film strip. Now you're looking at this video and you're probably thinking, that looks horrible. And I agree, it does look pretty bad. First of all, it was a dark, gloomy, rainy day, so there wasn't a lot of color to begin with. Secondly, I shot, uh, I used an Osmo Pocket 2, and I, I shot in a mode they call D-Cine-like. Uh, D-Cine-like has minimal amount of in-camera processing done to the video. Most videographers prefer to shoot in log that has almost no in-camera processing done to the video or cine-like, which just has a little bit of in-camera processing done to the video. The reason being is that it will give them more latitude in post to edit the video the way they want. If I shot, let's say, I think they have a mode just called color. Then the camera does a lot of processing. It adds contrast, it adds saturation. And when I try to edit it in post, it would be harder for me to get it to look the way I want it to look. Hence why most videographers prefer to shoot in log. That isn't available cine-like. Now, as you look at the video, first of all, look at the bottom here. I mentioned there's the film strip down here, and you'll see there's a little play button, and there's a little, like, play head. So I could just play, and you can see this is a 26-second video of a beach that isn't too far from where I live. And you can see there's a Lake Erie, and I'm just panning across the beach. Nothing special. And as I mentioned, it was a gray, dreary, rainy day. So that's it. Now... Also, if you look over at the right-hand panel, you'll notice that light, detail, and effects are kind of lit up and indicating that I could edit there. But below that, detail, optics, and lens blur are grayed out. Your editing options in Lightroom for a video are limited, so I can't do anything with detail, optics, or lens blur. And if I move from bottom to the top here, if I open up effects, you'll notice that texture, clarity, and dehaze are not available. I really could do as far as effects are concerned to a video, is add a vignette or add grain. Above that in color, uh, you'll notice, if I close down color mixer, that point color and color calibration are not available, but everything else is. And if I go up to light, you'll notice that everything's available here, including the tone curve. So I could do any type of tone editing to the video, but I have a limited amount of color editing and a very limited amount of effects. If we go over to the far right and we look at the tools, you'll see most of them are grayed out, but the crop tool is available. Now, if I go to the crop tool, when I turn it on or click on it, you'll notice there's no handles. You cannot crop a video. You cannot straighten a video in Lightroom at all. What you can do is you can flip it 
So if you want to flip it, you can do that. You can get a mirror image of it. And you can flip it vertically. whoop de doo All right. But if you notice, when you have the crop tool open and you look down where the playhead is, you have some handles here. You could trim the video with the crop tool. So if I have this 26 second video and I want to say cut it down to 15 seconds, I could grab this right hand handle and just pull it to left until it says 15 seconds. Or maybe I want to take five seconds off the front as well. So I could just grab this and pull this to take five seconds off the front. You could hit play to just check to see if you trimmed it properly. If you're satisfied, just close down the crop tool and go to say the edit panel. And now I have this 10 second video instead of the 26 second video. Now Lightroom is non-destructive for videos, just like it is with images. If I decided that I want the full 26 seconds or I want to change the trimming that I did, I could just go to the crop tool again. Another way, if you don't want to open the crop tool, is just click these little scissors here. And when you do that, you'll get the handles and I could come in and just change it. And I'm just going to take the full 26 seconds because I stood there for 26 seconds. I want all of them. So, and if you want to just click anywhere in your timeline, you could just do that like that. So we'll take the full 26 seconds. So, so far, I really haven't done anything to the, to the uh, video yet. But let's go to the editing tools and let's talk about doing a real edit to the video. Now, one thing I left out about what is available is you notice that profiles are available. Also, you have auto edit option and you have a black and white button. When this feature was first introduced in Lightroom, you could not convert a video to black and white. You only could edit a color video in color. Well, since then, they added that functionality. So if you want a black and white video, you could just click on the black and white button. You'll get the monochrome profile automatically. And if I go down to color, you'll have a black and white mixer. And it's the same black and white mixer you would have if you were editing, editing a black and white image in Lightroom. So that is there. So that's great. But if you want to stay with your color image, you could use the default color profile. But if you click on these four little bricks here, you could see that there are a number of different profiles to choose from. First of all, I have the color monochrome as favorites. They're the basic uh, profiles. But there's also artistic. And you could just hover over them to get a look what they do. And I do advise, as I do when you're editing an image, that you choose your profile or early in your workflow. Because you can see these profiles really affect uh, the tone of the image quite a bit and the contrast a little bit as well. So you'll want to apply this early and then do your editing on top of it because it's kind of folly to do all this editing and then add a profile later because you're going to have to go in and re-edit stuff. So I'll just give you a quick look at all of these. I'm just going to stay with the color for this image. But I just want to give you the idea that you can uh, choose a profile and you can edit now in black and white. It's been that way actually for a while. Uh, so if we back out of here and we go to light, we actually do an edit on this. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I think I'll add some contrast. Bring highlights down. I'm going to open up shadows quite a bit. Now, the typical way... I like to get a white and black point in Lightroom is to hold in the Alt or Option key while moving the slider. Alt if you have a PC, Option if you have a Mac. That does not work here. So if I hold in the Alt Option key and click on the slider, it does not it does not turn black. And then I'd move it to the right till some color come through and then back it off. Same thing for blacks. The black slider, if I held in the Alt Option, it does not turn white. And if I moved it down, color won't come through. Also, the clipping indicators don't work. Uh, with an image, I could ta tap the J key. And if I was blowing out the highlights, I'd get red in those areas. And if I was crushing the shadows, I'd get blue in those areas. does not work here. So you have to edit the whites and blacks by eye. So you kind of have to do that by eye. Sorry. Um, but you do have the tone curve. So maybe put up the shadows a little bit there. And those highlights a little more. Kind of play with this a little bit. And so you can do your edit as far as light is concerned. When we go down to color, um, I could adjust the temperature with the two sliders. I'm going to add some vibrance to the image. I do have a color mixer available. So if I want to say go to orange, maybe there's some orange up in those trees, I could add some saturation, make it a little brighter. Nothing really, I don't really see it doing anything. Uh, yellow, add some saturation. Fire burns green. I don't know. 
uh, green down a little bit and add some saturation. So you could do stuff with the color mixer as well. At any point in your editing, if you want to get a view of your video, just hit the play button and you could see it. Because sometimes you're editing in one area and the sun's in that area and then when you go to another area, it's going to be too dark or too light and you're gonna, you're going to have to find like a happy medium uh, between those. But you could come in, I could see that I have vibrance pretty too high. Vibrance down. And that's that. And then, as far as effects are concerned, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, you could just add a vignette. Or add grain, or both. But I'll just add a little bit of a dark vignette. And that's it. Now, it is non-destructive. I mentioned that already. If you just want to reset everything, go to these three little, like, you know, dots and go reset edits. You also could see a before after. Here, let's put somewhere more in the middle. A before after by hitting the backslash key just like it was an image. There's before and there's after. Before and after. And if you want to export your video, go to the export button right here and you could just export it as an MP4 full size, just the edited video. That's kind of a preset here. You want some custom settings, although there's not a lot to custom set. You can click on custom settings, you'll get the export dialog, and on the right hand side, you have the option to export it as an MP4 or as whatever format the original video was in. This original video happened to be MP4, but if it was, let's say, a .mov, if I did original, it would send it as a .mov, but we'll do MP4. And then you could use the original name, you could do a custom name or the capture date with a file name. So let's say you did a capture date with a file name, then it would have the capture date file name, or you could do the custom name and you could give it a custom name here and give it a start number, just kind of like you're doing an edit um, or you're doing an export of an image, a regular image. I'm not gonna export the video, but you could, and it would be your edited video. So as you can see, my edit is horrible. Uh, partly I blame that on, uh, myself, but partly I blame it on the, um, kind of lousy day and you are limited. There's not a lot you could do here. I definitely can get a better edit using a dedicated video editing application. Although every dedicated video, e uh, editing application would be much more difficult to use than Lightroom. This was very easy just to move a few sliders. But in here, I, I need to do something better with light. It just doesn't look right. I don't know. Something like that. But anyway, that's it. That's how you edit a video in Lightroom. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.